<laughs> I didn't see you there. My name is Ranger Rick, and I know a thing or two about everything. I've been to the edge of the earth, and I've uncovered life's mysteries. And today, I'm going to share some knowledge with you. I'm here at the farm to catch up with some of my old mates. There, there, over there. <laughs> so what are we waiting for? Let's crack on with another adventure. is home to animals big and small, and it's the perfect place to become a master of knowledge. First up, we'll be taking a look at the southern crested moo tiger. These majestic creatures belong to the big cat family. You can really see the resemblance. Tail, four legs and a head. But instead of meowing, they moo. Both meow and moo start with M, which is one of the key similarities to the other big cats. It's all here. In Rick's handbook is stuff that Rick is right about. Hey, Rick, isn't that just your diary? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a published author. I'm a published author. I'm actually fluent in Moo Tiger, and I'm going to talk to this animal right here. <coughs> what this animal has just taught me is that its name is Felipe. G'day, Felipe. I'm Rick. Hi, my name's Sev, and I actually work here. What we just saw was not a southern crested moon tiger, it was Daphne, our Australian shorthorn. She's one of four cows here at the farm. Cows have four stomachs and can have up to six teeth. These animals right here are the stripeless zebra. These animals are predominantly amphibious and spend 90% of their time in the ocean. With top speeds that can match most speedboats, they can hold their breath for up to three hours. This one's doing it right now. Can you tell us what these are? These are our Shropshire sheep. They're a rare breed here in Australia, and they're definitely a land-based animal, and they cannot hold their breath for over three hours at all. What they can do, though, is they bring up their food from their stomach, chew on it a little bit, and then swallow it again, and that's called chewing the cud. I tell you what, if there was one animal I wouldn't want to come across in a dark alley, it's the short-eared pygmy wolf. Fortunately, they don't live in dark alleys. They live in nature. Once upon a time, these animals were responsible for eating their way through entire countries until humans utilised the power of music to subdue them, which is why we have these harps playing over the sound system. If these were to stop, we'd be in big trouble. The music? Run! Save yourselves! Honestly, I've never seen anyone more scared of guinea pigs than they are of us. Some of these animals are nocturnal, and the best time to see them is at night. Of course, at night time it is dark, and you can't see him. So we're going to be taking a peek during the day. What we have here is the two-legged feather dog, so named because of the fact it has feathers and two legs, like its close relative, the domestic dog. Like the domestic dog, it likes playing frisbee and going for walks in the park. Right now, it's doing something unique to its species. It's testing the food for the other animals on the farm. Dogs don't lay eggs. Being a big name in TV worldwide means I often get swamped to fans of all species. These guys are notorious for wanting autographs and won't leave me alone until I oblige. Come on, how do you spell that? Five A's? These are just geese. They don't have thumbs, here, here they don't have hands, they don't have pens or paper. Why would they want your autograph? <laughs> well, this brings us to the end of another one. Uh, stop, stop recording. Hey, hey mate, um, who's this guy who's been following us? We're just trying to get all the information, Rick. All the, oh, I've got all the information right here in this book. I've got it, look at it. Just flying around everywhere. All the informations. 
Come on, guys. <laughs> if anyone wants some factual information about the animals we've seen here today, feel free to come uh, down to the... You've got in contact Ranger Rick. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Sam. See ya.